Hey everybody, Side Gig Guy here. Are you thinking about breaking into the gig economy? Either because you're one of the thousands of people that have lost their job this last year, or just because you went to the grocery store and realized that eggs cost like $10 a carton now. I totally get this. And the gig economy is out there and it needs people just like you. All you really need to have is a car or an ability to be able to deliver things. But you probably decided you didn't want to do it for whatever reason. Either you didn't think you would make a lot of money, you figured that the wear and tear on your car was going to be too much, or that gas is so expensive that you would eat into your profit margin. So in this video, what I'm going to do is discuss all those things I just mentioned. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to walk you through the financial reports that I do each month for June through December of 2022. All right, so let's start with some universal constants of the gig economy. How much am I going to get paid per hour? I hate to think about pay per hour because it really depends on what hour of the day you're working. Sometimes the day are real busy and sometimes they're slow. So it just varies too much to come up with a pay per hour. Instead, focus on a monetary goal. How much money do you need to make in that shift or how much money do you need to make that day? And then I also have a monthly budgetary goal. I know how much money I need to make per month in order to make my budget. These things are important to know. So I need to make $100 per day and I also need to make $2,000 per month. So I focus on driving 20 days out of the month and then I take the other 10 days off. In almost every market in the country, you can make $100 a day doing one of the three side gigs or a combination of all three. DoorDash, Uber Eats, and Grubhub are very easy to get signed up. So if you stick around also till the end of the video, I'm going to discuss signing up for the side gigs. So let's just walk through a typical day where I made $100 in that day. I probably drove 100 miles. My car gets 50 miles to the gallon, so I'm going to need two gallons worth of gas. Gas costs $3.25 a gallon in Georgia, so that means I'm going to spend about $6.50 in gas. I have to pay taxes on the money that I make, not just federal tax and state income tax, but I also have to pay something called self-employment tax, and I pay that on the profit that I've made. How do we get to the profit number? Well, first we have to take our deduction. The IRS gives a 65.5 cents per mile deduction on every mile that you drive for work. So I will take 65.5 cents, multiply it by 100, and I'll get a deduction of $65.50. So that takes us down now to a net income of $34.50. So I pay taxes on $34.50 when I make $100. The tax I pay for self-employment is only $5.28. So take away $6.50 approximately for gas, and then another $5.28 for taxes. Wear and tear on the car is something that's hard to quantify, but AAA says that car maintenance costs about nine cents per mile. So that's what I'm using, nine cents per mile. And as for wear and tear, I use a formula that is 30 cents for every mile that I drive, and I call it a new car replacement fund. I assume that after I drive 100,000 miles, I'm gonna to wanna to have at least $30,000 in the bank to buy a new car. So every mile that I drive, I set aside into a savings account 39 cents, nine cents for wear and tear and 30 cents for a new car replacement. So after I've paid my taxes and I have bought gas and I've set aside money into savings, how much do I have left over? I have about $42.72 for every $100 that I made. And yes, that's true. About half of it's gone now in uh, saving for expenses and things like that. Now, if you're just considering doing this part-time, you probably don't need to worry so much about wear and tear on the car and gas. If you just need an extra $100 every month, you can just zip out and do that real quick. But if you're considering this as a full-time career, it's absolute must that you set that money aside. Or otherwise, when your car breaks down and you don't have any money saved, you're gonna be in a world of hurt. Now, as promised, I'm gonna walk you through the last six months of 2022, June through December, so that you can see how much money I made and how much money I made per mile and how much money I put into savings each month. By the way, let me just throw the monthly budget up here real quick so you can take a look at it. You can see that my $2,000 contribution is there. My wife's social security and her pension money is there. That's the income that's all on the right hand side. And then on the left hand side of the screen, you can see all the expenses that we have. 
My motto is uh, debt free, boss free, worry free. You'll see that on my YouTube channel. That's because I live the Dave Ramsey zero debt philosophy. I don't have a house payment. I don't have a car payment. I don't have any credit card payments. So those are all my expenses. So here's June. Now in June, we did fall $3 short of our $2,000 goal, but that's okay. We made 98 cents per mile and we deposited into savings $904. In July, we made $2,700, which was about $1.04 for every mile that I drove, and we put $1,100 into savings. In August, we made $2,400, and it worked out to exactly a dollar per mile, and uh, the deposit to savings was $1,100. In September, we made $3,300. September was actually the month that I left Comcast, so I had a lot of extra time to do side gigs, so we made a lot more in that month. 97 cents per mile, and I deposited $1,500 into savings that month. In October, $2,700, and that was it worked out to $1.05 per mile. In November, $3,000, $1.04 per mile. And in December, $2,700 and 99 cents per mile. So you can see that that $1 a mile constant averages out month over month. It's a good number to work on. So if you need an extra $100, just count on that you're probably gonna drive 100 miles. And then in your head, you can figure out, okay, well, how much is my gas expense? This is if you're gonna do it part-time. If you're gonna do it full-time, you need to really consider setting money aside for car repairs, new car replacement, and your self-employment tax. That's 15.3% of your profit after you take the 65.5% mileage deduction. I know that's a lot of numbers that I just threw at you. Um, I wanted to make sure that you understand, run this video back if you wanna see the sheets again as well. But like I said, if you wanna start doing this and break into this economy, it's not that hard. All you need is a good car, and the apps will walk you through this. It's a very easy job to do. Anybody can do it as long as you know how to operate a smartphone and follow GPS instructions, <laughs> get to an address. Signing up is also very easy. I made a video, it's right here. If you wanna sign up for DoorDash, this is the entire onboarding process and how you need to get started. Thanks for watching, Psychic Guy out.